Microsoft Loop is described as a co-creation app that brings together teams, content and tasks across your apps and devices. It was first launched in early 2023 and we've seen a lot of development and new features since. It's great for project planning, note taking, brainstorming, task management and more. Let's take a look. Loop can be accessed on the web or as a web app from the Microsoft Store. This is my Loop homepage and these are known as workspaces. They are ordered by those I've recently worked on, but you can also favorite workspaces. You also have quick access to recent components and pages and ideas, which we'll get into both shortly. To open a workspace, you click on it, but you also have some additional options, such as adding to favorites, renaming or changing the style, seeing who else is a member of that workspace and deleting it. We're going to start a new workspace by clicking this plus button. You are then able to customize your workspace starting at the top with the header image. There's a pre-made selection or you can search stock images. You can then add an emoji icon, give the workspace a name, and you can invite others to the workspace from the initial creation. I've now created a workspace and within this workspace you have pages. You can have multiple pages, which will be listed down the left side of your workspace. You can add more pages by clicking this plus button. Pages can also have subpages. The other option shown on the plus button is links. This is for links to documents in your SharePoint or websites. If for example, you have a Word document you want to add to your workspace, grab the share link, paste it in here, and when you click on it, it will open in Word and the web. The same goes for website links. Sticking to this left sidebar, at the top the Loop logo will take you back to the home page. You can already see the workspace that I just created. Another way to switch workspaces is by the workspace title here. Next to the Loop logo you've got your notifications, for example if you're added to someone else's workspace or tagged in a page. You can also search through all workspaces and this button here closes the sidebar. Below this, Recent again shows you all your recent pages and components you've been working on. And then there's Ideas. Ideas is a space for you to put ideas that you might not want in your main workspace. You can view your ideas regardless of what workspace you are using. What's great though is if for example you're in a shared workspace, you can use ideas to make your page without anyone else seeing the work. Then you can add your finished page to the shared workspace. At the bottom of the sidebar, you also have your recycle bin for each workspace. If anything is deleted, you can recover it here. If we move over to our page, when you start a new page, you'll see a selection of templates that can pre-populate your page. There are loads of great examples here that really show you the uses of loop. For this demo, we'll stick with a blank page to show you the different options available. So starting at the top, you can add a cover image and an icon emoji. These can be different for each page you create. You can also give it a title. When it comes to adding content, you'll see this pop-up appear to either use the forward slash to add content or the at symbol to tag something. Tagging in Loop is not just people. You can also tag files, meetings, and other Loop pages. With the forward slash, this allows you to add pre-made content or formatting. For example, we can add a table, and even within a table, we can forward slash to add a checklist into a box. Next, you can edit text on the page, so you can add different heading styles and even code. There are also smaller templates here, such as task lists or voting tables. These will be pre-formatted, but they can be edited. What's cool too is that if you create a task list, this will also connect to the Planner app and add your tasks there too. You can add communication elements such as tagging people or emojis in here, as well as inserting images. And this record video option actually lets you record a video within the app to place in a page. Then at the bottom, you can also create links between other apps, both Microsoft owned and third party. Now we've got content on this page, the formatting can be changed. Just highlight the text to make changes or perform actions. Another great thing is, say you have placed the content in the wrong order, you can use these dots to the left of the content to drag and drop it to the correct order. There's also a speech bubble icon. 
This allows you to leave comments on the content as well as reactions or even a boosted reaction to the content. You can also leave comments when you highlight text here. So when done and organized properly, Loop gives you these rather lovely looking workspaces that you can work on alone or with others. There are several ways you can work with others on your workspaces and pages, so let's explore them. As you can see at the top middle of my page is my face. If you have other people on your page, you will see their faces here too, and you can hover over to see if they have the page open. You will also see your face on the page list in the sidebar. Over at the top right, you have a share button. This will give you various options. First is access to a workspace. This gives others the ability to access all the pages and subpages within your workspace. You then have page link. This gives access to just one page within your workspace. And lastly, there's loop component. This essentially means that rather than inviting someone to work on your workspace or page within loop, you can send them content that they can edit within other apps, such as Outlook or Teams. Let me show you. If I want to share an entire page as a component, I'd use the share dropdown. But you can also highlight a section of your page, such as a table or text, go to more, and then create loop component. You'll see the section highlighted by this box, and you can copy and paste this into a Teams chat or an Outlook email, and others in the chat or who received the email will then be able to edit it live. You can also share pages and workspaces in other ways. For example, on the sidebar, click more and share page or component. You can also see under the workspace name, it says one workspace member. If you click on here, you can send an email, invite or generate a link to the workspace. There's just a few last features I want to point out. So if you're on a page and you go to more options, you can create and print PDFs of your workspace. Below this, you have version history. And this is great to record and restore old changes that have been made. You also have settings, which includes options such as dark and light modes. That is an overview of Loop. This is being recorded in July 2024 and it's stated that very soon you'll be able to invite people outside your organization to collaborate on workspaces too. I expect many other great features will continue to be added. It also has a great mobile app too, so you can take your workspaces on the go, but check it out and see what you think.